In a previous video, we came to Visual Studio and we were looking at the things that were in the left side over here called BizTalk Explorer. And of course, you can move these windows around. It doesn't have to be on the left side. That's up to you and how you use Visual Studio. But by default, it's over here on the left. So we've already looked at that. I want to close that. And now I want to open a project or solution that we'd created in a, well, actually, the one that we're going to create in a future video. I'm, again, doing this kind of backwards. And so I'm doing the overview at the end now that I have all these uh, interesting orchestrations and schemas to be able to show you. So if you can, go get yourself a 22 or 24 inch monitor to be able to, to uh, use BizTalk more effectively by uh, getting more windows open on this, these screens here. Okay, I just kind of closed everything so we're at the uh, start page. And first of all, let's just focus, uh, I'm going to minimize this right now. So I'm gonna we're going to talk about the Solution Explorer here. Again, just like regular .NET, you have one solution and it can have many different projects in it. And some of these projects can be regular C Sharp projects or you can have BizTalk projects. So when you create a BizTalk project, you're going to do File New Project. And then after you've installed BizTalk on your machine, it will plug in these templates into Visual Studio so that when you come down here, you will see the ty types of BizTalk projects there are. And it's like, again, 99% of the time, you're just going to be using a BizTalk empty project. The server migration project is to migrate uh, from prior versions of BizTalk into this version. So that's how you would create a new project. And we, again, we'll do that in a future video. So. Let's look at some projects we've already created here. Here's a, uh, a map project. So let's, let's talk about kind of the order we're going to do things in. We're going to build schemas first. So here's the schemas library. And I have both XML data that I've created and schemas here. So schemas will all have XSD as their suffix. That's the standard um, W3Org schema definition language. So if we open one of these, let's pick a small one here, PO address. This is one we're actually going to reuse in other schemas. So you do have schema reuse here. So here we have a root element, and then we have an attribute, see the at sign, and then we have five elements here. And so you can also see that what you highlight on the left here, or what you click on the left, highlights in this uh, XML box in the middle. And you cannot type in this area, by the way. If you, if you want to change the schema in text, you would actually have to come over here and open it with an XML editor or a schema editor. The BizTalk schema editor by default is just works in this GUI mode. And so now we need our properties window uh, back over here. So let's open that and hit the little um, hide button. And so when you click on these various parts of the schema, like there's actually the schema top here, even above the root, and that's where you can specify things like your target namespace, which we'll again talk about later. There's the root element name. And then you have your attributes. And notice it says here count country is an attribute field and name is an element field. So these are the types of things you're going to see in a schema. So let's close that. And then we're going to have maps where we map data from one schema to the other. So here I have a maps project. And I have three maps in that project. And let's just open this one. It's called map w3org po to standard PO. So what we're going to do in that video is we're going to go to the W3Org site and we're going to find their sample purchase order. And then we're actually going to map it to our own internal purchase order. And so in a map, you have all these little lines in the middle. And it can be a little confusing at first. And we'll talk about how you can move this around and how you can go to the uh, grid preview and line it up, things like that and how you put the functoids on here. A functoid is basically the tools. They'll, they'll be over here in your toolbox. So if you're designing a Windows form, you would add form shapes on your screen. But when you're designing a map in BizTalk, you, you draw um, and drag and drop functoids onto your screen. The functoids will basically help it build XSLT code. And actually under the cover, most of these little functoids are implemented in C Sharp within the XSLT. So your XSLT style sheets will have C Sharp code in them. And then in the videos where we talk about maps, we will show you that you can actually do a, a validate map here. I'll just kind of give you the preview of this real quick so you get the big picture. And you can slide over here, and it actually will build a file with the XSLT in it. And if you want to see it, you hold down the Control key, and then you, when the cursor turns to a little finger here, you click on it, 
and then that will open the file and you can actually see the style sheet that it created. So you can see here where it says user, user C sharp string concatenate, that's a concatenate function or functoid and it's actually going to call a C sharp routine. And If you scroll to the bottom of the XSLT, see starting right here, you can actually see the C sharp at code and that's all built for you by copying the functoids onto the grid, the mapping grid. So that's a map. The next thing, one of the other things we'll talk about then are pipelines. And pipelines can be used to receive, for instance, flat files. So I've got to find one here. Okay, pipelines have a suffix of BTP. Now sometimes I will put entities in different projects, like I'll put all my pipelines in a pipeline project, or you might decide you want the pipelines in the same project where your schemas are. It's kind of a personal preference or a or corporate preference or standard of how you decide you want to do that. So here's a CSV pipeline. Let's open that. There are basically two types of pipelines, receive and send. Okay, the pipeline is open now. Let's turn that little button on so we can see two things at once here. So in the middle of the screen, these are called your stages. A receive pipeline has four stages. A send pipeline only has three. And then what you can do is you can drag and drop these components into the appropriate parts of the pipeline. And they're smart enough to only drop in the correct place. So if you try to drop a, uh, a disassembler where the, where the decoder would go, you see it will not drop there. So it's pretty smart. And then you would also use your properties window here. So like if we click here, we can see we have a flat file disassembler. And then down here is where you would specify your schema, for instance and various other properties that would be used at the uh, runtime. And so your pipeline will get compiled into your DLL and then when the message is received it will use it to basically turn the flat file into XML. So that's a high level overview of pipeline. Then we have orchestrations and that's probably what we'll spend most of our time working on in this course. And so here let's open this one. And again, you have a toolbox over here with all your orchestration shapes. Or another way you can put shapes on here is you can right click and say insert, insert shape and then you can pop in the shape here. So that would save you a little screen space instead of using the toolbox. And there are port surfaces on the left and the right. They're actually identical. You can actually uh, move a port from one side to the other. We'll show you that later and uh, you can zoom which is a new feature in 2006 this is the hundred percent size right here and if you want to make it bigger you can make it 200 percent and I tend to leave it on 75 but now you can also go down as small as 30 percent and you can also do a file print here and it will actually print and then I've in the past I've taken these orchestrations and taped them together and hung them up on the wall which sometimes can be uh, useful for design and debugging or trying to work with the user to discuss what your business processes should be. Most all orchestrations, well I'd say I'd say 90 percent or more of the ones I do will start with a receive shape called an activating receive and then based on that the message will get processed and you have here like a decide shape where you can say if this is true go down this branch otherwise go down this branch. Uh, you can see here we've added trace statements and we'll explain that in upcoming videos. The trace is my own little uh, C-sharp trace. There is really no trace built, well there is an orchestration hat trace but I don't like it so I've created my own trace routine here basically. Then you have scopes where you can do try catches and catch exceptions. You have uh, just shapes like here where you can just uh, do calculations or whatever. These are called expression shapes. This uh, little dotted line here is called a construct shape and inside of that you can have your maps or what's called a message assignment shape. Here you have a loop, the little green thing that goes around. So this whole section here could loop X number of times. So if you double click here, this is where you specify I want to loop while this is less than this. and then inside that loop I'm actually calling another orchestration by sending a message to the message box and then again here if the PO is over a thousand dollars I'm gonna handle it one particular way if it's under a thousand dollars I'm just gonna automatically approve it 
Again, this may, might seem long at first, but basically this is the orchestration that we're going to be developing in all the different videos throughout this course. And then here I want to send the PO for approval if it's over a thousand, and I'm going to wait for a response from a from a manager to see if he's approved it or not. And we're going to give him a certain amount of time to approve it. This is called the delay shape. So we're going to give him 10 minutes. And if he doesn't approve it in 10 minutes, we're going to take some other action. And then if it's approved, we're going to call some internal system and perhaps add it to a database or whatever. That's the uh, that's this section of logic here. And then we're also going to be dealing with BAM in the, uh, actually that's an advanced CD. BAM is business activity monitoring, so that logic will be here. And then when I'm done, we're at the end of the orchestration, the little red dot at the end signifies you're at the end. So basically that's an orchestration. And almost any one of these shapes, you can just click on it and open it and see the code. Um, or in the case of a map, let me show you a map here. This is a message assignment. Let's see, I've got to find a map. That's not one either. This one may not have a map. Yeah, I think in most of my, there's maybe one. In most of my orchestrations, we're doing the maps in the receive port or the send port, but you can also invoke a map inside of an orchestration. And so you would specify the message coming in and the message going out. And then if you click this little button here and click OK, it will actually open the mapping utility kind of like while you're in your orchestration. And so here I'm basically just initializing several fields to default values. Okay, back to the orchestration now. I have, of course, the tabs are across the top, so I can have multiple orchestrations, map schemas, all open at once. And then you can also use the window option to switch between them. Or you can use this little um, arrow right here to be able to select. So if I had, for instance, this orchestration open and this map, then you can see all these different tabs at the top. And you can see here I have now four things I can switch between or I can go to Windows and switch that way. If you ever close your start page you want to get it back. Um, I think it's here called Tools Start Page. Well it used to be Tools Start Page. Looks like they may have moved it again. Your orchestrations can also make references to other orchestrations just like you would in any uh, C Sharp program. So right here you can right click and say add reference and then you can choose the DLLs either from the disk or from the same solution that you want to include. So you can see here that we've included PO maps, PO schemas, and PO schema generated into this current project called PO orchestration. And again up here you can collapse these. You can see that in one solution you might have three or four or five or six projects. Actually, the last place I worked, we were doing a fairly large system, and we had, I think, 32 projects in our solution. There's also a tab over here called Orchestration Viewer. And again, if you lose some of these tabs and you want to reopen them, you can come here to the View screen. And so what you see over here are other types of things in orchestrations. You see your ports, but the ones you use most often are messages and variables. So the way you define a variable in an orchestration is you come to variables and you right click add new and then again you should probably have a naming convention but I put like STR that's kind of the old Hungarian naming convention where you start your variable name with what it is. I still find that very useful even that's a even though it's a throwback to the old VB script and VB6 days. And then some of my, some of my variables I start with V or VAR and I was a little bit inconsistent here as you can see. So these are my variables and then here you'll have your messages and your messages basically represent schemas so every one of these will have a schema tied to it and so you do, usually you design your schemas first and then when you design your orchestrations you'll point back to the schemas that you designed earlier and in orchestration everything you're dealing with is typically XML by the time it gets to your orchestration you also have things called correlation roles scopes are these little uh, smaller chunks of code just like you can have a, uh, a scope basically in a, a C-sharp program where the variables can be limited to that scope. And then types are actually like classes. Up, up here these are things like objects. So a correlation set think of as an object and then down here you'll have a correlation type. Think of that as a class. And so from this correlation type I could create five different correlation sets above. 
that's kind of an overview of all the different pieces from a very high view of what's in Visual Studio for maps, pipelines, schemas, and orchestrations.